Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, a place where we break down the science behind the medications you use. My name is Ngoya Nicholas and I'm a pharmacy practitioner. So thank you so much for taking your time to watch this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please take your time and subscribe, like and share it. So today we are focusing on a popular insight by the name ibuprofen. We'll cover what it is, how it works, who can use it, who should avoid it, its side effects, its advantages, and its uses. So before we even begin, allow me to raise this disclaimer. The information provided on this platform is for informational and educational purposes only. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice diagnosis or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or the use of medications. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have read or viewed on this platform. Okay? So let's get started. What is ibuprofen? Ibuprofen is a non-steroidal and inflammatory medication, commonly known as NSAIDs. So it is widely used to reduce inflammation, relieve pain, and bring down fevers. It's widely available over the counter in lower doses. But if you need higher doses, you must have a prescription from a qualified physician. But how does it execute its function? In medical terms we call its mode of action okay so we had spoken about cyclogenesis in my previous videos so if you've not watched it please ensure that you go back and watch it I've explained it in detail about the mode of action of NSAID but today I just want to touch it on it briefly okay so uh, ibuprofen is a non-selective non stredo and inflammatory medication when I say it's a, it's a non-selective, I, mean I mean that it doesn't select between uh, cyclogenase 1 and cyclogenase 2. And remember, we had also discussed that cyclogenase 1 plays a very vital role in our bodies, okay? Unlike cyclogenase 2. So cyclogenase 2 is the one that is supposed to be inhibited. But since ibuprofen is a non-selective cyclogenase inhibitor, it will go and strike all the two cyclogenesis, meaning it will inhibit all of them down. In simple terms, ibuprofen executes its function by inhibiting both cyclogenase 1 and cyclogenase 2. Okay? And if you happen to watch my previous videos, I had explained in detail how these cyclogenase enzymes contribute to these uh, factors that we are trying to treat by uh, taking these enzymes okay we know that cyclogenase enzymes they are responsible for production of a chemical in the body known as prostaglandin and prostaglandin is also responsible for promoting inflammation pain and fever so when ibuprofen executes function by inhibiting the cyclogenase enzyme that means that there will be no production of prostaglandin henceforth no fever no inflammation and no pain okay so that's how ibuprofen works many companies manufacture ibuprofen in various brands okay i know we are used to profen but profen is just a brand of a particular company okay the active ingredient there is um, the medicine inside there is ibuprofen so it comes in many brands both locally and internationally i'm just going to mention a few of them i may not mention everything that you may have come across i'm go i'm just mentioning the most common ones right so the most common brands include uh, ibuprofen that is available in kenya here and uh, i know it's also available globally uh, neurofen uh, actoprofen okay so the others that are available the brands that are available globally include uh, uh, advil motrin neurofen Rufen also, uh, Genpril and Midol, okay? So those are the ones that are available uh, 
globally. Regarding the dosage of ibuprofen, the recommended doses in adults is uh, 200 mg to 400 mg after every 8 hours. But in some instances, the doctor may prescribe it uh, the same dose after every 4 to 6 hours, okay? But generally, the recommended dose is not supposed to exceed 1,200 mg in 24 hours. But the doctor may prescribe it, uh, or the doctor may increase the dose depending on what you are managing. But uh, coming to children, this medication is not recommended to children below six, six months. Okay, but for children uh, above six months to twelve years, uh, the recommended dose uh, is calculated depending on the weight of the baby. So it is crucial to follow pediatric dosing guidelines provided by a healthcare professional or on the product label. Please note that, as I had mentioned earlier, ibuprofen can be accessed over the counter in lower doses, okay? But the higher doses, you must have a valid prescription from a qualified and licensed physician, okay? So the higher doses ranges from 400 to 800 milligrams and it, they are prescribed depending on what you are managing and also based on the uh, instructions from your healthcare provider, okay? It is regulated in that manner because of uh, the consequences it can cause on your body when taken in higher doses, okay? Allow me to bring to you this question, okay? So avoid exceeding recommended doses of ibuprofen because taking more than the recommended dose of ibuprofen can lead to serious side effects such as stomach bleeding, kidney damage and cardiovascular issues. Remember what we discussed earlier, ibuprofen is a non-selective cyclooxygenase inhibitor, meaning it inhibits both cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2. And you know the importance of cyclooxygenase 1 on the stomach lining, okay? It provides a protective uh, measure on the stomach lining. So if you, ex if you take more than the recommended dose, you may have those serious side effects. Okay. Just like other medications in this class that we have discussed in my previous videos, ibuprofen has many uses. Just to mention a few of them, uh, it is used to relieve inflammation and pain in arthritis, those who have arthritis. It is also used in muscle aches, uh, back aches, toothaches, menstrual cramps, fever and other minor injuries. Okay? Note that it can be very effective in providing relief from both acute and chronic pains. And in my previous videos, we had discussed the difference between acute pain and chronic pain. So if you want to watch my previous videos, you can take time and watch them, okay? Well, in which age group is ibuprofen safe? Or who can use ibuprofen? So most adults and children over the age of six months can safely use ibuprofen, okay? But it's essential to follow the instruction of your health healthcare provider on how to use this medicine. Just like any other medication, ibuprofen has its own side effects, okay? So I have categorized them in two separate groups, the minor side effects and the more serious side effects. Just to help us understand, most of these side effects result from maybe when you take this med medication, when you have a condition that prohibits you from using ibuprofen, okay? In other circumstances, you may experience these side effects when maybe you overdose this medication, right? So let's go into the side effect that uh, the ibuprofen has. These side effects include stomach pain, heartburn, nausea, dizziness, headaches. These are the minor side effects. And the more serious side effects include stomach ulcers or bleeding, kidneys or liver problems, increased risk of heart attack or stroke, severe allergic reactions, and some that have not mentioned in this video. Equally, let's look at those individuals to whom ibuprofen is prohibited. So who should not use ibuprofen? So ibuprofen is prohibited in the following people, the people with the following conditions. So individuals with a history of stomach ulcers or gastrointestinal bleeding, people with severe kidney or liver disease, those with heart conditions or high blood pressure, pregnant women, especially in the third trimester. So
So individuals with known allergy to and say non stradol and inflammatory medications infants under the age of six months old okay so don't give this medication to infants under below the age of six months okay finally if you have any suggestion on what you would want me to discuss or any correction you would want me to amend please just let me know okay so let's look at the advantages of ibuprofen okay the advantages include it is widely available over the counter but note that it's only available over the counter in low doses but when you need a higher dose you must have a valid prescription from a licensed qualified physician okay another advantage is that it can provide quick relief from pain and information okay so those are the two advantages that i can mention regarding ibuprofen note that ibuprofen is often preferred for shorter term use okay due to its shorter half life okay so choosing ibuprofen often depends on the specific condition being treated and individual patient factors okay so your doctor will advise you regarding that my parting shot is that always follow the recommended dosage because taking more than the directed can increase the risk of side effects avoid taking it on empty stomach to reduce the risk of gastrointestinal issues if you need to use this medication for for more than a few days or for more than the recommended days consult with your healthcare provider so be aware of potential interactions with other medications you may be taking thank you for taking your valuable time to join me today and watch this video just my request please subscribe like and share this video okay stay healthy thank you bye bye